So as you can tell by the sweet little baby in my arms, I had my baby. So I had every intention of filming my laboring, me in the hospital, all that stuff leading up to the actual birth of this little girl, but um, that just didn't happen. So if you've been following along with my pregnancy updates, you would know that I've been in prodromal labor for like three weeks leading up to actually having her. So every time I started having contractions, I kind of didn't believe it and wasn't sure if this was actually go time or not. So this time I didn't start out like updating or filming or anything like that. So since I wasn't sure I was an actual laborer or not, kind of didn't get off to a good start of documenting this. And then once I got to the hospital, I found out that they actually do not allow any filming during the actual um, delivery part. So I had to kind of give up on my dream of having this on film. I really wanted to be able to film it because this time with COVID going on, we were not allowed to have another person in the room with us. So we didn't have that person taking pictures for us and stuff like that and it, in real time when everything was happening. So I really wanted a, at least a video where we could get some like still shots from that with our like reaction of her coming out and all of that. But that just didn't happen. And things went really quickly at the end, which I'll get to. So we have very few pictures of when she was very first born. But I'm going to start from the beginning of this session of having contractions and all of that and tell y'all what went down for this little girl's labor and delivery story. So the night before I actually gave birth to her at about 7.30, well let me back up a little more. That whole day I was just having like contractions just here or there. I was just really uncomfortable. I had been losing my mucus plug over like the past week and a half and I had lost some more of it that morning. So I knew like things were actually happening in my body, but I still, I wasn't sure. I had been let down so many times before. So I just wasn't gonna get my hopes up for this time that this was actually it. So um, around about 7.30 or so, about the time that I sat down to eat dinner, um, I noticed that I was having more consistent contractions. They were still far apart. They weren't that painful, but they were starting to come on again. And I was just like, oh great, here we go again. We're gonna set up for another night and have contractions for hours and hours and hours just for them to fade away into nothingness. So I was just kind of preparing myself for the night that I was going to have and preparing myself to be let down the next day. So we had dinner, um, I went to bed and just to like lay down and relax and as soon as I laid down, they got more intense so I got back up. My husband went ahead and laid down and I labored for a little while in the living room. I watched an entire season of Survivor that night because um, I wasn't getting any sleep but I just couldn't get my tra contractions to like even out. It was like for a while it would be like every one to three minutes right on top of each other really strong contractions and then it would slack off to like every 15 minutes so I was like this isn't it this isn't really go time we're being fooled again so the whole night pretty much went on like that I finally went to sleep at about eight o'clock the next morning I fell asleep for about two hours and when I got up I was having little to no contractions at all, um, but I had noticed the night before that um, I thought I was either peeing on myself or that I was leaking a little bit of something. So um, my doctor's visit had actually gotten canceled because this was on, everything started on a Wednesday. And that Tuesday, the day before, I was supposed to go in for my 37 week uh, checkup, but we didn't get to go because of the ice storms and all of that that were happening in Texas. And we didn't have power. 
for a couple of days. So I'm really glad that she did not come at the beginning of the week. So my doctor's office actually called me that Thursday morning and they said, hey, we are able to see patients again since you missed your um, checkup. We would like to see you today. Can you come in at, I think my appointment was at two. So I told them, yes, I've been having contractions. I think I might be leaking something. Definitely want to come in and at least get checked and see if there's any progress going on. Might as well, right? Instead of going to the hospital and them sending me home like I had been sent home like three times by now. So yeah, definitely was going to take them up on that offer. So a little bit before I went to that doctor's visit, um, my contractions started picking up again. By the time I got to my doctor's office and actually was in their office, they were about every three minutes apart again, but they weren't really, really intense, but they were enough to like make me uncomfortable and make me where I wanted to like sway during them. So when my um, nurse checked me in, I let her know everything that was going on. My doctor came in and checked me and I was still at a one and a half, which I had been sitting at for over a week. So I was like, dang it, like this isn't it. There's no progression. And she's like, but it does look like you are leaking something. So I'm going to do the swab test on you and see if we can tell if your water has broke or not. And I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Pretty sure it hasn't, but I'll take anything right now. So within like seconds of her like doing the swab on the little test strip, she was like, this looks positive. I'm pretty sure that you are leaking fluid. I don't think your water has like officially broken, but you're leaking. And this happened in my last pregnancy. I had what they called a high leak. I don't know what that is, um, but pretty much like you have like a, a tear in your bag higher up and it has to, you know, travel down and get past the baby and all that instead of your water breaking like where the baby's head is so only a little bit comes out at a time so that's what was going on so she's like you know what there's no reason to send you home because we live like almost an hour away from the hospital now we used to live like 10 minutes away from the hospital and it was great but now since we lived so far away she's like you know what i'm not gonna send you home there's no reason you go over to labor and delivery. I'm going to tell them that your water has broken and we're going to go ahead and get you checked into the hospital. And I was like, wait, what? Like, it, we're doing this? And I didn't ask her that, but in my mind, I'm like, surely she doesn't mean we're going to actually have a baby, right? Because, like I said, I had been let down so many times before, so I was definitely in disbelief and my kids were at my house with my um, best friend that had been staying with us for like the past couple of weeks just in case I did go into labor or uh, to help out because I've been on bed rest for a lot of this time so I called her and I was like they're sending me to labor and delivery I'm not coming home like let the babies know that mom is not coming home hopefully with I'm not coming home unless I have a baby. And so she's like, so they're actually letting you have the baby? And I was like, I don't know. She said my water's broken and I'm just so relieved. And like I started crying on the phone with her and I was just so relieved that they were finally going to do something and let me have this baby because I was in so much pain. I was frustrated from just having contractions every couple of days. Like my body was exhausted, my mind was exhausted. I was like at the end of my rope at this point. So I called my husband as I was driving over to the actual hospital because it's like right next door to my doctor's office, but there's a parking lot in between. So I ain't walking that mess, especially while having contractions. So I drove just where I would be closer to the hospital entrance and called my husband, let him know what was going on. Didn't cry on the phone with him. I was just emotional with my friend, which doesn't make sense. But I told him, I don't know if they're keeping me. I will let you know in just a little bit if they're keeping me or not and if you need to come uh, and be with me and leave work. Because he, at this point, he had only been uh, back at work for, this is his second day back to work that week. Because we had no power, the, uh, the roads were icy, 
all of that mess. So they were playing like major catch up at his work. So I was like, don't leave just in case. Cause I know that you've got a lot to do. Like just stay there and work a little bit longer. It's fine. Cause I still, I was like, it's not happening. We're not having a baby. <laughs> so I went up to labor and delivery. I didn't bring my stuff in or nothing. Cause I'm expecting to go home. And, and they start checking me in like they have all the other times check on baby um they didn't check me again because my doctor had literally just done that so the nurse was like you know what we're just going to get you all hooked up um start monitoring the baby for a little bit i'm going to call and see what she says to do and within 30 minutes my doctor came walking in and she said we're going to break your water the rest of the way and we're going to get this going and i was like so if you break my water, that means that this is happening, right? And she's like, oh yeah, your water's already broken. We're just going to help it break the rest of the way. And we're going to start this labor up where you'll actually start progressing and do something. And I was like, so I'm staying. That's what you're saying, right? And she's like, yeah, like <laughs> you're staying, you're having this baby. And I was like, so I get to stay and I'm not leaving without a baby. <laughs> like total disbelief at this point so after they broke my water and if your water is ever broke like on its own I don't know if it's like the same because mine has never like gushed like that like I said I just had like the high leak last time and they didn't break my water until like I was much further along so it was like just so much it felt like so much was coming out of me and then with every contraction it just felt like it just gushed again and I'm pretty sure I just let my pee go a couple of times too but anyways so as soon as they broke my water I called my husband and I was like okay so they just did this so that means that we are having a baby this is happening it's real this is not a drill we're going for it it's it's d-day so um he told me way ahead of you i'm already on my way to the house i'm gonna take a shower get some stuff together and then i'm going to be heading up to the hospital to be with you and so i was like okay thank goodness because this is actually actually happening like still mind blown at this point that i'm gonna have a baby like it just, it didn't feel real. It felt like someone was playing a joke on me and any, at any moment they were going to come in and be like, you know what? No, you're fine. Go home. Be pregnant for another week. So glad that wasn't the case. I'm sorry. She's distracting. She's just so cute. So anyways, so... I laid there for about an hour waiting on him because he had to drive all the way home and then drive all the way to me. So it was probably an hour and a half at least that I was just laying there waiting for him. I got to the hospital around three um, after my doctor's appointment because it took a while to get me into the office and then it took a while to get over to the hospital and all that. So by the time that my husband actually got to me, it was probably around 4.30, 5 o'clock and by that time they had also started my IV. They had started me on antibiotics because I wasn't sure if my water had broken the night before or not, but I was pretty sure it had. And they had also started Pitocin um, because my contractions, they were, they were consistent, but they weren't strong enough. And I told the nurse like, we need to get this going. Give me Pitocin, let's get these contractions good and hard and let's get something moving along. Because this is my third baby. I know what contractions are supposed to feel like. I know they're supposed to hurt really good when you're getting into that good groove. And when they're actually like dilating you and stuff. So I knew that the contractions I was having were just not intense enough. So I told her, give me the Pitocin. Let's get this going. So she did. I had a wonderful nurse that was super supportive. I let my nurse know from the beginning that I would like to try this um, natural, but that I was open to a, uh, what's it called, an epidural if 
it took too long and I wasn't able to make it. But that my goal was to do this natural because it was my last baby. I really felt like I could do it. Um, with my first one, I almost went natural. I only had the epidural for about 20 minutes of it. So I really believed in myself that I could do this if it just progressed quicker. So she started me on the Pitocin. We got things moving, got those contractions stronger. Um, I was bouncing on the ball, standing up and swaying. My husband feels like I don't let him help me enough during the laboring part because I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be talked to. I don't want you to help me. Just sit over there in the corner and be supportive, but don't talk to me and don't touch me. So he was doing that over there while I was just laboring in my own little world, just trying to get through and paying attention to my body, visualizing it opening and all those things. So um, I did that for several hours and she kept bumping my Pitocin up a little bit more and a little bit more. So my Pitocin, uh, they do it in like uh, two increments at a time. So we got up to an eight and my contractions were extremely strong. And I told my mom, cause she had called to check on me. And I told her, um, I'm going to have the nurse check me at 8.30 and see where I am. And if I haven't progressed any, I'm going to weigh my options and see if I want to get that epidural or not because my nurse that came in and told me uh, you can either get your epidural right now or you're going to have to wait a couple of hours because the anesthesiologist about, is about to be in the OR for several hours doing back-to-back C-sections. And so I was like, okay, like right now I'm fine, I'm dealing, everything's fine. So at um, 8 my nurse actually came in to check on me and I was like, you know what, it's just 30 minutes. Check me, see where I'm at. And she did and I was still out of one and a half. So at that point I felt so discouraged, so let down. I felt like my body was working against me. Because I knew I was having strong contractions. I could feel that things were supposed to be happening. And when she told me that, it just, it crushed all of my motivation I had going for myself. So I had a LEAP procedure done a year and a half prior to this delivery. If you don't know what that is, I had um, precancerous cells on my cervix. So they actually cut those cells away and so I have some scar tissue on my cervix now. So since I have that scar tissue, my doctor said that that's what was pretty much keeping me pregnant this whole time is because that scar tissue was not allowing me to dilate. So that's why I was just stuck at one and a half. That's why the prodromal labor wasn't doing anything is because it just wasn't strong enough to break that scar tissue and if it wouldn't have been for that I would have probably already had her by now so feeling defeated feeling like this isn't gonna happen um, getting to the point where I didn't know if I could do this physically anymore because it was really getting painful and at that point like I was of course I was hurting I was uncomfortable but like I was dealing, like I was, I was definitely at the top of my threshold, but I was still coping. And that was about eight o'clock. So, um, in the next 40 minutes, I would say things took a turn. Like I started having very intense contractions. I felt a lot of pressure I felt like I needed to go to the bathroom and so I went into the bathroom and was going to try to go number two and my brain just wouldn't let me push because like it was telling me like if you're not dilated and you try to push this poo out and you push too hard you're gonna rip so um, I didn't force myself to go poo um, so I come out of the bathroom and at this point like 
I am in so much pain. Like, the pain tolerance wise, like, I was at my peak. And I tried sitting on the ball and there was so much pressure that when I would sit down and I would have a contraction, just my bottom pressing against the ball, I was like, no, like, get that thing away from me. I was all over the room. At one point, I got up on the hospital bed with the back of it all the way up and I'm leaning on the hospital bed, just writhing in pain. And my nurse comes in to check on me and she's like, so what are we feeling? And I was like, I'm feeling tons of pressure. Like it's different than it was before, you know, what it was 40 minutes ago. Um, like it, it's getting intense. I can't take this anymore. I want my epidural. And so she called down to the OR because the anesthesiologist is still in there. And, and they tell her, okay, we are 10 minutes out from being done from this. You, he will be in her room in 10 minutes to give her her, her epidural. Um, she's the very, very first stop that he's going to make. Just tell her, just, you know, hold on. And I can hear her having this conversation. So I'm like, okay, like, just hold on a little bit longer. It's almost over. I'm about to have this relief from this epidural. So I'm just telling myself, like, just get through the next couple of contractions. You can make it. He's going to come in here. He's going to save your life and get you away from this pain. So, um, in that next... 10 minutes it intensifies even more and by the time the anesthesiologist came in um, I was laying on my side and my nurse had asked me like do you want me to check you because we've got to check you anyways before you get the epidural to make sure we have time to do it and so I was like okay yeah whatever I'm not going to be progressed we're not going to be there there's no change but yeah go ahead and check me like let me down again because that's what I was expecting. Don't get emotional. We're not even doing the emotional part yet. So she's checking me as he comes in and my doctor follows him in as well because she was the one doing the C-section and they were both done. So they came to check on me and my nurse uh, says, so do you want the news or not? And I'm thinking, she's gonna give me bad news. I know she's gonna give me bad news. So I was like, yeah of course like tell me and she's like you're at a nine and a half and you're almost ready to go and i had my hand over my face at this point because i'm just just waiting for disappointment and i'm just like are you serious are you really serious i'm at a nine and a half i know mommy's getting too pumped she's waking you up so after my nurse checks me she leaves the room i'm guessing to let people know like it's getting closer and when she left the room I'm on my side facing my husband away from the, the door and a contraction hits me that's different from the rest of the contractions like it's a this is it contraction and everything in my body starts pushing like it's hard as it can involuntarily pushing and so I tell him, I'm pushing, and he's like, don't push, don't push. And with this push, remember that poo I told you that I knew that was in there? Well, that came out. Um, so he gets on the little nurse's button, and he's like, hey, can I have someone in here? Because I screamed to him, get her back in here. And so he's like, hey, like all calmly, hey, can you get someone in here to help clean my wife up? and they're like yeah sure she'll be in in just a minute and so at this point my anesthesiologist walks in and he's like hey um do you still want your epidural and i was like I, I, we, we don't have time like it's not gonna work like we don't have enough time to do it this baby's coming and he's like no 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 it's fine we can do this you, we can do this while you're on your side you don't have to sit up or anything um do you want to go ahead and do it and at that point i had another contraction and with this one, I thought it was amniotic fluid, but it turned out it was blood. But I felt a big gush. And because my legs are closed and I feel this big gush and my body's pushing with everything it has. And I tell him, there isn't time. Because <laughs> I knew that like, we have minutes. Like y'all better get in here because it's happening. And given I was at a one and a half, an hour prior to this. 
So yeah, things happen pretty for pretty freaking quick. So at that point, my nurse comes back in. She cleans things up, and they are taking the bed apart. And I hear my doctor because she's finally in the room now, and she says, "Candace, I'm right here for you. It's okay. You're okay." Because at this point, I am like not hollering but like moaning loudly and i'm like ah because <laughs> it hurts so bad and so i'm like i'm sorry for cussing i'm sorry for yelling i don't want to traumatize the other patients and they're like don't worry about them you're about to have a baby you're fine and so um my doctor starts like getting all her stuff on and they start taking apart the bed and I am still on my side with my legs closed. And so they take apart everything super fast because I can tell it's it's coming. And I don't think they were expecting um, things to happen so quickly or for the baby to move down so quickly either. So when I rolled over and opened my legs, my doctor says, oh, the baby's right there. So I had a mirror above me and as soon as I opened my legs, I looked up there to see what I could see and the doctor's like, baby is right there and I can see that she has her fingers on either side of the baby's head and her head is bulging out already. So pretty much as soon as they roll me over, I have another contraction and I intentionally push with this one and I can see her head like come out almost all the way with that push. And she's like, okay, you're doing great. Next contraction you feel, you put everything into it and you push because the baby, she's right there. You're about to have her. And so I like took a couple of breaths because it felt like it was forever in between like that contraction and the next one. Like, it felt like it was like five minutes, but it was probably more like a minute. But I feel that contraction building up and I'm like, okay, okay, like get ready for it. Let's go. This is it. So as soon as that contraction peaked, I pushed with everything I had. My body was doing most of the work. Like I wasn't really doing much, it felt like. And I feel and I see her head come out and they're like, okay, okay, uh, stop pushing. Because, um, you know, you're supposed to stop pushing and let them like do things. Like suck the baby's nose out and stuff like that. And I just scream out, I can't! And I continued to push and like her head, her body, everything came out with that last final push. And she was face up, which if you don't know, babies are supposed to come out face down and then they rotate themselves like in your birth canal. And then with that next push, you push out their body. She was face up, so didn't have to wait for her to turn. But sunny side up is what they call it. That is supposed to be a really hard way to have a baby, apparently. It didn't face me at all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she came out like that, and the cord was wrapped around her neck. So they quickly unwrapped the cord and put her up on my chest. And she was just like my other baby. She was very alert and just looking around, but she wasn't crying, which that's how both my other babies were as well so it didn't scare me that she wasn't crying but it concerned them because she'd have the cord around her neck she was not full term but she was term because i was at 37 weeks and two days at this point so they were concerned enough where they wanted to get her over to the little warming bed and stimulate her and see if they could get her crying so they waited until her cord stopped pul uh, pulsing and um, my husband cut the cord and then they took her over to the little warming bed and like jostled her around, got her crying really good. So she's over there like completely by herself with the nurses and my husband is still beside me and he's like, you did so good. You're awesome. That was amazing. I could not believe I actually just did that. And like at this point I am just like laying there like oh my god like that just happened and like all that pain and pressure I was feeling was gone and all of a sudden I felt amazing but I was also like having an outer body experience like 
I couldn't believe I just did that. And I look at my husband and he's just like, you know, bawling of course. And the whole time I was pushing, I, his hand was on my hand because I was holding onto the rail and I could feel his hand shaking. And I was thinking to myself while I'm like waiting for that final contraction, don't have a panic attack on me right now. Like just stay calm, everything's fine. Cause I knew that he was anxious and scared and didn't really know what was going on and everything was moving so fast that I didn't want him to freak out on me. But he did it, he held it together. And so like, I look up at him and he's like, you know, you're, you're amazing, you just did that, you're awesome. And I was just like, why are you still over here? Go to your daughter. And he's like, I want to make sure you're okay. And I was like, I'm fine. Go meet your daughter. And so he goes over to the little incubator that was on the other side of the room. And he looks at her. And you know, I'm looking over at them while they're cleaning things up on me. And um, if you haven't followed our journey so far, we had had three ultrasounds where they thought that her right foot was clubbed and so I asked him so I asked my husband like are her feet okay is she okay and he says she's perfect he says she's absolutely perfect and I can see her little legs moving around in the air and I could tell from even across the room that her feet were not clubbed at all that she was perfect. They get her weighed, all her measurements and everything, and uh, give her her um, hepatitis shot and her vitamin K shot and all of that, and they bring her back over to me um, and lay her on my chest, and I'm just looking at her, and they finally, you know, like, leave us alone. They've cleaned up everything. They've done everything they can at this point. And they tell me, you know, as soon as you want to get up and go to the bathroom and just let us know when you do that, uh, where we can help you uh, because you're probably going to need some help the first time you stand up. And because I was shaking uncontrollably because all that adrenaline was rushing through me. Like I've never felt that before. Just like, just like all kinds of energy, just like wanted to get out of my body and the only way it could is by shaking my entire body and so i'm just like, shaking uncontrollably trying to hold her and so all the doctors clear out all the nurses clear out and we are just left with this beautiful little girl and i'm just like Whew. like that just happened that was so quick I cannot believe I dilated from a one and a half to a 10 pretty much in about an hour span because I got the doctor or the nurse to check me a little bit after eight and by 9.32 she was here. So everything was just so fast and pretty much like my doctor told me that like as soon as that scar tissue broke she thinks that I went from that one and a half to a nine and a half instantly and then at a contraction later I was at a 10 and I was pushing her out so yeah definitely very intense couple of minutes very very quick um, I did not tear at all thank the Lord I did not tear but she came out so fast that she had like a little abrasion on her eye just from like the rubbing of coming out so fast even though she was sunny side up, it didn't affect anything. The cord wrapped around her neck. She came out so quickly that no oxygen was lost, nothing like that. So she was just perfect. No clubbed foot, no nothing. Like nothing was wrong with her. And she weighed 6'2", so definitely our smallest baby. And she was 19 and 3 quarters inches, which is the same length as both of our boys but she was just weighed a lot less than them but that's okay because she's just a dainty little girl but we are so happy to finally have her here i'm so happy to not be pregnant anymore and i just can't believe that we have a daughter and that she's here like actually here in my arms i don't have to go through any more pregnancies like this is it and this was a great one to end it on it really was
So I will hold her up to y'all and let y'all see her. So this is little Haley Jane. At this point, she is a week and a half old and she's such a good baby. She sleeps really good, nurses like a champ. Her brothers are just smitten with her. Like we are just so, so in love. But that is it for my birth story. I'm going to be doing a postpartum update probably next week when I hit, uh, or when she hits two weeks old, I'll probably do a postpartum update then, but everything is going great so far. And we just feel like our family is complete now and we are just beyond happy. So I hope that you enjoyed this labor and delivery story. If you have any labor and delivery stories of your own, please share them down below. I love watching and hearing all that stuff. And hopefully this gave you a positive experience that I did it all natural. I actually made it through and everything was fine. I survived. <laughs> Even when I was about to give up on myself, it was just because she was about to come out and <laughs> that's why it was so intense. But I'm so glad that I stuck in there. I'm so glad that the anesthesiologist was busy and he couldn't come and give me my protorol when I wanted it because I would not have traded that experience for anything. That is my whole labor and delivery story. I hope that you enjoyed it. For now, I am going to go put this little girl in bed and get some sleep myself. But I hope that y'all enjoyed this video and I will see y'all very soon for more baby updates and more baby cuteness like this. Jump into the car.